This is the story of the way The Simpsons came on. We were doing it as one minute on Tracy Ullman show on a variety series that we had here. They're one minute little cartoons. Uh, I loved the people I was meeting doing those one-minuters. I loved the animators. I loved the spirit they brought to the work. I loved how much they cared. All of them wanted to be on prime time as a dream of their lives, to do a quality animated show on prime time. And I just thought that was a great reason to start trying to do a show. I, didn't, I, I wouldn't do it until I thought we had the right people to do it, you know? And, and then myself, Sam, and Matt came together. You look just like, except you got a little more. And a little less. God, I feel so over. The Simpsons are a combination of my own family uh, and, uh, and the TV that I grew up watching. A lot of families and, and television sitcoms when I was a kid have all sort of mutated into The Simpsons. Allow me to introduce my family. This is my wife, Marge. Hello. Hello. And our three children, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie. The Simpsons are named after my family, but I do have a brother and sister who I have not humiliated by naming a Simpson after them. And uh, I can't tell who's more annoyed with me, the ones who were named or the ones who weren't. Can I help you? Ah! Oh, don't be frightened of this. It's nothing but a letter opener. Who are you? Don't tell him. Give him a fake name. Homer Simpson. Don't. Homer Simpson is a loving father. However, he is ruled by his impulses, and he's often uh, moved to become very angry very quickly. Some way to show your gratitude. No gold, no diamonds, no ruby, not even a lousy card. And a lot of the laughs come from Homer getting very mad very quickly. He doesn't know that life is mistreating him. He loves his family, but he's too stupid to know he loves them. And he, like the others, is caught in a struggle to be normal. And he fails most of all. He's probably the most endearing character, I think, in the show, because the consequences of his failures are more extreme. He works in a nuclear power plant, after all, and can cause a meltdown at any moment. <laughs> Joke's on them. If the core explodes, there won't be any power to light that sign. <laughs> My father's named Homer, and uh, when you name a buffoonish cartoon character after your own father, you have to make up for it by naming your firstborn son after him as well. So I have a son named Homer too. Holy moly, talk about parenting. Come here, baby. Oh, Homer. Marge Simpson is the one with the three foot high beehive. It's a combination of my own mother's hairdo when I was a child and the bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> I'll show them what one screwball can do. Ooh, look, Maggie. What is that? Dodecahedron. Dodecahedron. Jesus, I don't know what you're doing, but it's very strange and your father's trying to worry. Lisa Simpson is the sensitive, intelligent, gifted, talented child in the Simpson family. Hence, she is totally ignored. <laughs> ho, ho, woo! Oh, I want to be in that rumba. And the same go over there. Oh, over there! The Simpsons have these big, bulgy eyes, and they have this peculiar, curvy overbite. And that's because I used to draw that way when I was a kid. And it's a drawing style I developed that I could actually draw and keep my eye on the teacher at the same time and still have the characters look like that. They sure look like they should look like. Don't you have that feeling when you look at them? You wouldn't have them look like anything else. And let me tell you how, how dangerous that is. Uh, we did a first show where we believed in the script enormously, and we record the actors' voices first. And we sent it out, and we have to wait six months before we see the final product. And we all gathered to see the final product, and we were devastated. We were just, we, we called Fox in two days and said, please delay our show. We, we have to wait to see our second show. We might have a disaster because uh, the person who was the director of that show and who supervised the drawing had had them that far off the models that had been set for him. He just adjusted, and just that little adjustment, instead of having them dear, accessible creatures, they were grotesque. And, uh, and the show was awful. And just, but I can't tell you how minute a change you had to make in drawing them for that to happen. That's how precious it is. There's definitely a connection between The Simpsons and life in hell. <laughs> the comic strip uh, appears in newspapers around the country and around the world, and it's me just by myself. 
and it's matte graining, pure and simple. My rabbits um, acting in their little hellish ways, struggling with love, work, sex, and death. The Simpsons is a mass family entertainment show that's still way off kilter. But if you think the Simpsons are weird, check out Life in Hell. <laughs> You're in for a shock. This looks like a discount for... Bartman! Who are you supposed to be? I'm Bartman. Word Bart, if you rearrange the letters, is Brat, and that's what Bart is. Also, the name Bart sounds very funny when it's being said by Homer. Bart! Bart! Sounds like a dog barking. Bart? Bart? Bart! Here's Bart Simpson. Let me draw you Bart Simpson. Starts out with an almost round eye, another round eye, two little dots. I'm very fast with this. This is the haircut that I had when I was five years old. And that's Bart. The rest of the Simpsons are in a struggle to be normal. Only Bart realizes that being normal is boring. And so Bart's attitude is anything for a laugh. Bart also worships Krusty the Clown, his childhood TV hero. And Bart's motto is, stand by your clown. I think that's a lesson we can all learn from. <laughs> hey! Hey, we Mom, were watching what are you that. doing? Well, you won't be watching these cartoons anymore, ever! But Mom, if you take our cartoons away, we'll grow up without a sense of humor and be robots. What is normal? I think normal is a struggle to be normal, and there's nobody who is really normal. In The Simpsons, I think people are amused by them because they're amused by their struggles to be normal, and they fail miserably every time, and that abnormality is what makes them funny. Oh. My father was a cartoonist. I loved cartoons from the time I was a kid and uh, always knew that I wanted to work in cartoons and dreamed of growing up and someday having my own cartoon show. I didn't think it was going to actually happen, but it turned out that uh, luck was with me and it worked out. Some people call me a space cowboy. Yeah. Some call me the gangster of love. I think they're terrific characters. I mean, you know, you know, people say a lot of things, but I think our approach to it was to do it the way we would, we would do uh, any regular television show. I think they speak to something. Homer in particular, you know, where everybody thinks he's a buffoon, I think he's one of the greatest examples of American manhood that we've ever put out because he knows he's dumb and he knows he's limited and he doesn't particularly feel like a good father and he doesn't particularly feel like a good husband and yet he is all those things for the struggle of life. Everyone special to me is under this roof. It's true. We do very cartoony things, but we also try for a level of emotional reality um, that, and make people forget they're watching a cartoon. And uh, we don't do it all the time. It's not a heavy show, but there are, there are moments where you forget you're watching a cartoon and you get caught up in the, in the show and in the, the stories of these characters. This fish represents a better life for both of us. This fish makes me a champion and a hero. To who? To to those weirdos in a worm store. All this fish represents is just how selfish you are. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'm going back. Oh, yeah, sure. Watch! Whoa. The thing about The Simpsons and working with real actors is that we don't recognize a difference, and I think that's important to the show. We work with real actors. We work with, you know, some actors that I've worked with almost all my life. Julie Kavner is somebody I've worked with and on. This is the third series I've worked with her on. Dan Castellaneta is the second series I've worked with him on. We have wonderful actors, uh, and we have great outside actors coming in. You cannot talk like that. There has to be something that you can do better than anybody else. Well, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. OK, how about you, Ralph? Wonderful. If you go to a day where we record The Simpsons, where we just do the acting part of it, it'll look like any other television stage that you walked on. The big effort of this show is to stop people thinking cartoon. And I think it, it, it's, it's, we have a slightly new form because we've succeeded in getting, you know, animation is a wonderful art, and we, and we celebrate animation, and we love it, and we have great animators who are doing important work, but they too are thinking about the acting, and that's what a great animator does, he gets the acting right. Animation is really special because it doesn't exist in any other form. Film is a depiction of reality, but animation doesn't correspond with anything. There are no drawings that move other than what you see on the screen. And in that way, it's like a dream or like a hallucination. It's just wonderful. And to have drawn the characters for the first time flat on a piece of paper and to see them come to life and move around and do things that you didn't know they could do is like, uh, it's a little bit like being God. And it's just the most wonderful feeling in the world. 
Tell me, did you straighten up? Don't say anything, Marge. Let's just go to bed. I'm on the biggest roll of my life. 